Hey, what's up, wine speeders? Amanda McCrossin from at Some Vivant here, live from one of Napa Valley's coolest, hippest new wineries, Ashes and Diamonds. With its striking mid-century modern design and wines that are more similarly styled to that of the 60s and 70s, and a pretty full label to boot, I'm wondering if we're about to see the start of a shift here in Napa Valley and what that could mean for the valley as a whole. Let's find out. Napa Valley has always been an ever-evolving, changing place. Whether it was phylloxera or prohibition, we've always sort of adapted to whatever circumstances that the world presents us. Now is not really any different. Over the last few years, I've definitely noticed a trend and a shift in consumers wanting wines that are a little bit more restrained, a little lower alcohol, wines that are more indicative of that of the 60s and 70s. And that's really what Ashes and Diamonds set out to do. How the wine makes you feel is very important to us. There was this unbridled optimism and energy that California had in the mid-century. And uh, the wines that we were drinking from Napa Valley, classic California wines, uh, whether it was from Ridge, the 60s and 70s, or the BV wines, the Andre Chalicef made, very important to us. And we kind of connected the dots together. We figured if we're gonna make wine in that style, classic California wine, we might as well be in classic California architecture. One of the things I love about Ashes and Diamonds is how simplistic, minimalistic, and more old school it feels here. There's a certain brightness to everything we do, whether it's the slab of yellow on the wall or the groovy uh, zigzag shade structure, which was inspired by the architect Donald Luxler. My staff won't let me uh, impose this policy on our guests that no cell phones are allowed. Mm. <laughs> but one of these days, I think I'd like to convince them that when you come here, we're going to take your cell phone from you. Which would suck for our Instagram page, but <laughs> you know, wanted people to sort of disconnect and for a minute find some solace. So. But it's not just the winery, and it's not just the building and the tasting experience that's a little different. It's the wines as well. The organic farming aspect of this was really important to us because it's representative of, of who we are as a culture of this winery. Uh, I didn't hastily replant, which is what people like to do here. It's funny, like in, in France, people don't consider 35 year old vines to be old, but. Just starting to get there. Yeah, but like here, it's like, they're like, oh, when people come here, like, I haven't seen vines that look like that. Like, our, our sort of everyday Napa Valley tourists that come here and I let them know, like, hey, yeah, okay, so I couldn't afford to do 200 thousand dollars an acre or however much it costs to replant of course but also um, it's important that we do that make that decision that it's done with a lot of thought the playful nature of the tasting room the fun the vibrance the exciting feeling that you get when you walk in there the relaxed feeling that you get when you walk in there it's something we haven't seen in a really long time. And while I think Napa Valley will definitely always be an area of tons of different wine experiences, I do think that Ashes and Diamonds signifies a change in Napa Valley and a new generation that's excited about wine in a totally different way.